In this video, we analyze uh, NMR spectra for spin spin coupling uh, for a molecule that is like this C, H of A, X, X, C, H of B, Y, and Y. Okay, so uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, proton NMR spectrum, and then X and Y are different atoms uh, from each other, but uh, they're not NMR active. Okay, so the only NMR active uh, uh, nuclei are going to be this HA and HB. Now, because HA and HB are in different uh, electronic environments, that means that our NMR spectrum is going to have two signals, one due to each one of those protons, HA and HB. Right, so uh, we're going to start with that uh, NMR spectrum right here. That is going to be our HA and HB signal. Right here will be the chemical shift uh, in the x-axis. Now, what we're interested in determining in this video is how uh, the presence of this NMR active nucleus affects the signal of that uh, HA proton and how the presence of HA affects the signal of HB. Okay, so we're going to try to examine the signal splitting uh, uh, of HB on HA and of HA on HB. Right, so let's start with HB. Again, uh, the signal for HB would come from something like this. The frequency would be equal to uh, gamma V0 over 2 pi, 1 minus sigma. Okay, and again, uh, this is a different frequency than that one because the electronic environment is different. Now, in addition to this, okay, something that is uh, the signal spring comes from the following fact. Okay, if we analyze the signal uh, of, for example, HA, okay, the idea is that you're going to have an extra magnetic field pointing in this direction, okay, B0, okay, and then you're going to have that this uh, uh, extra magnetic field is modulated by the electronic environment, that is what this sigma accounts for, but in addition to that, the uh, effect that causes the splitting of the signal is the fact that this HB that is very close to that HA, okay, also has a tiny little magnetic field. Okay, we know that uh, uh, HB in the presence of this external magnetic field is either uh, processing uh, and generating a magnetic field towards the field or against the field. Okay, and what, what we actually know is that about 50% uh, of the atoms of HB are going to be pointing towards the field and 50% are going to be pointing uh, against the field. Okay, so again we have that 50% uh, of HB are, point, are generating a magnetic field that points towards the field, and 50% generate a magnetic field that points uh, against the field. Right, so when uh, we look at what is the uh, magnetic field felt by this uh, uh, atom here, you have the external magnetic field, you have the modulation by the electrons, and then you have that half of the time, okay, uh, you're going to have a contribution that is positive, and half of the time, you're going to have a contribution that is negative, okay? Uh, and what that means is that uh, you're going to see two different fields, right? Uh, one of the fields would be that in which you have uh, this, okay? So the external magnetic field with electronic uh, environment and that, and half of the time you get the external magnetic field, the electronic contribution, and then that, okay? So there's actually two, eff effectively, this HA sees two different magnetic fields, and what that means is that this signal for HA is split into a doublet. Okay? Again, this signal would come from uh, the external magnetic field modulated by the electrons, 1 minus sigma, and then the addition of this tiny little magnetic field of H sub B. Okay? And this signal comes from the external magnetic field modulated by the electrons, okay? And a negative contribution from 50% of the uh, protons of HB that are pointing down. Okay, so that's, that's what gives the signal to the splitting. And this separation between those two bands is what we call the coupling constant, which usually uh, has a value of, or we, we actually call it J. Okay? Now this coupling constant is independent of the external magnetic field because it only depends on the magnetic field generated by the spinning motion of that nucleus. Okay? And that is independent of the external magnetic field. It's an intrinsic property of each nucleus. Okay, so these J constants do not change with different spectrometers. Okay, so we understand then that HA is split into a doublet, two peaks, okay, by the fact of HB. Now let's try to assume, uh, let's try to figure out what the uh, signal of HB would be under the effect of HA. Right, so HB. Now, what's going to happen is that HA, half of the time, 
is going to be uh, uh, spinning in such a way that it generates a tunnel electric field that points towards uh, uh, the field. And 50% of the time, you're spinning in a way where the external magnetic field points against the field. Okay, so 50% of the time, you have uh, a tunnel magnetic field pointing in that direction, and 50% of the time, you have a tunnel magnetic field point into this direction. Okay, so much as what happened with HA, when you look at the signal of HB, HB is seeing the external magnetic field, and then modulated by the electronic, uh, electronic uh, currents, and then you see a tiny, either a tiny little field that is either up or down, and 50% of the time will be up, 50% of the time will be down. Okay, so you are going to get here exactly the same splitting. Okay, so this okay, is going to be uh, also split into two signals. Okay, plus. All right, uh, what we have that in this particular case, you would have that this particular signal comes from the sum of the external magnetic field being odd, modulated by the electrons, one over sigma, and then 50% uh, or uh, the contribution uh, that is positive of uh, H of A, which 50% of the time is pointing up. Okay, and this signal comes from uh, the sum of the external magnetic field modulated by the electrons, and then a negative contribution from 50% of the uh, nuclei of A that are pointing uh, down at a given time. Okay, so what you actually get is that you also uh, uh, come up with a doublet, and that will be the splitting constant for A to B. Okay, so when we look at the overall uh, uh, NMR spectrum, what you should observe to find for a molecule that is like this, okay, you have a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, proton contribution there, okay, this is going to be a doublet for A to A, and it's going to be also a doublet for A to B. Okay, and the intensity of the doublets is going to be the same. It's going to be one to one. Okay, uh, the relative intensity of this peak with this peak is one to one. This peak with that peak is one to one. And of course, because we have one atom of a B and one atom of, of A, then the relative intensity of this signal to that signal overall is also one to one. Okay, so in, uh, uh, in a few uh, uh, next videos, we're actually going to see here what happens when you have the coupling of uh, one A to B to two A to Bs, one A to B to three A to Bs, and so forth. Okay, and and uh, that way, we'll be learning patterns for how this splitting uh, happens in, in, in a general sense.